One night, the engines were huddled in the sheds. A storm raged outside, wind and rain pelting the walls of the shed. It kept them awake longer than they would have liked. Bother this weather, grumbled James. How am I supposed to get a wink of sleep with all this noise? The others just ignored him and tried going to sleep again. But the storm had other ideas. A loud crash of thunder sounded nearby, catching Henry off guard. Gordon couldn't help but snicker as Henry yelped. Ah, still afraid of the rain, aren't you, Henry? said Gordon. N no, certainly not, retorted Henry, still a little shaken. The, the thunder just startled me, that's all. Hmm. Startled, yes, continued Gordon. What was it they used to say? Once an engine attached to a train was afraid of a few drops of rain. It went into a tunnel, squeaked through its funnel, and wouldn't come out again. Gordon had a good laugh, but Henry merely snorted. Pa! I suppose you then burst safety valves on a regular basis! Henry smirked, thinking he had won. But Gordon was undeterred. Merely growing pains, Henry, he said. Surely someone like you would understand. Anyway, I'd rather burst my safety valve than be afraid of rain. Good night, dear Henry. With that, Gordon, along with the others, finally fell asleep. All except for Henry, who was left brooding. By the next morning, the storm had passed and Gordon was ready to head out with the express. He glanced at Henry, who was still asleep in his berth. Good morning, Henry, he said. Still asleep, are you? The sun's out, there's nothing to be afraid of now. Henry opened a sleepy eye. Oh, is that so, eh? yawned Henry. What a shame. I was hoping you'd be able to take my goods later. Gordon spluttered. But before he could retort, Henry closed his eye and went back to sleep. Disgraceful! Gordon fumed to himself as he made his way to the station. When he got there, Percy was shunting his coaches into position. Gordon was still grumpy as he backed down onto his train. I swear, Percy, he said, the world's gone mad. You mean it hasn't already? said Percy innocently. Don't be funny, Gordon snapped. Engines nowadays, especially Henry, are afraid of things that shouldn't bother us. Well, that's not fair, Gordon, huffed Percy. There are lots of things that can be scary, especially at night. Gordon scoffed dismissively. Maybe to you less important engines, but there's nothing I'm afraid of. Where would I be if I was afraid of a clap of thunder? Before Percy could answer, Gordon blew his whistle and rumbled out of the station. Thunder can be scary, Percy pouted. Despite his temper, Gordon's Express ran well. And they were even early to Croven's Gate. Well done, Gordon, encouraged his driver. Keep this up and we may be able to give you an extra polish. But Gordon didn't reply. He was wondering what he'd say to Henry when they next met. Just as he was doing this, the guard's whistle blew and Gordon was interrupted from his thoughts. Come on, Gordon, we're not going to lose those extra minutes now, called his driver. With a grunt, Gordon exited the station towards the forest. As expected, the thunderstorm had caused some damage to the forest, so Henry was assisting Harvey and the workmen in clearing up any wreckage. So does Gordon really think you're still afraid of the rain? Harvey asked, confused. No, or at least I hope not. He's just trying to get under my paint. The worst part is that it's working. Gordon's whistle blasted in the distance, and the big engine warped past without a word. He could hit a tree if he's not careful, commented Harvey. If there's one thing Gordon's afraid of, Harvey, it's common sense. Henry replied crossly. Gordon hadn't gone really far when he noticed an obstruction on the line ahead. Driver brakes! He cried.
the driver poked his head out of Gordon's window and gasped. It's a fallen tree, he exclaimed. Gordon rolled his eyes. I can see that, Gordon muttered. When's Harvey going to come clear this? I'm afraid I have no idea, Gordon, said his driver. I expect he's still down the line. I suppose we're losing those minutes after all, the driver chuckled. Gordon snorted and fell silent. He spotted a blue butterfly flying from flower to flower. The butterfly seemed to have spotted him too, and started coming closer. Gordon took little notice at first until the butterfly landed right on his nose. Looks like you made a new friend, Gordon, the driver remarked. Gordon was too focused on the butterfly on his face to hear him. He had seen many before, but never this up close. Curiously, the butterfly started crawling up his nose until it was just beneath his eyes. G -g 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 Get it off! Get it off! He shouted, jolting backwards into his express coaches. His crew were knocked off balance as Gordon reversed down the line. The butterfly, seemingly undeterred by the shrieking engine, started slowly following him. The workmen were almost done clearing a section of the forest, but Harvey was anxious. Do you think Gordon's all right? He asked for the umpteenth time. Before Henry could answer, Gordon's express coaches came into view. Then Gordon. Well, there's your answer, Henry huffed. Gordon backed down alongside, panting. Henry gasped, immediately forgetting his grievances. Gordon? He said. What's the matter? What happened? Words tried coming from Gordon's mouth, but he was too frightened to properly reply. Then Harvey looked ahead and noticed a butterfly in the distance. Oh, look at that. It has the same color as you, Gordon. <laughs> Harvey laughed. Gordon froze and his face paled. Henry and Harvey looked at each other. Uh, Gordon, said Harvey, you do know butterflies are harmless. Oh, it's lucky you got away in time, Gordon, Henry interrupted, winking at Harvey. Those things are horribly dangerous, and I would know. D dangerous? Gordon stuttered. The butterfly came closer, looking ready to land on Gordon again. Gordon began to scream, and in a cloud of steam, he raced away even faster than before. As soon as Gordon was gone, Henry burst into laughter, leaving Harvey respectfully silent. The butterfly, taking an interest in Henry, landed on his lamp. Gordon didn't stop until he reached back to Croven's gate, where he felt he'd achieved a safe distance. Some of his passengers went onto the platform to complain, but Gordon didn't hear them. He had other things to worry about. Sir Handel stood on a narrow gauge line, rather puzzled. Why are you back so soon? he inquired suspiciously. Gordon gasped for breath before looking around to make sure the butterfly hadn't followed him out of the forest. A butterfly almost got me, he exclaimed panting. Luckily, I got away in time. Drat thing. Sir Handel blinked. What? I said, Gordon repeated in an annoyed manner, a butterfly almost got me. Sir Handel stared for a second before laughing. You, Gordon, he exclaimed. You, afraid of a butterfly? I swear you big engines are so fragile. You don't understand, cried Gordon defensively. They're dangerous! Dangerous? said a voice. Gordon and Sir Handel looked over to see Rusty pull in with his maintenance train. We see butterflies all the time on our little line, Rusty continued, and they've never once done any harm. Uh, are you sure? asked Gordon. Of course. In fact, I saw one this morning and I'm still here in one piece. Gordon gaped in stunned silence before gritting his teeth in fury. Henry! Despite his best efforts, the story of Gordon and the Butterfly soon spread. So when Gordon came back to the sheds that night, the engines all heard about it. So there's nothing you're afraid of, Gordon, eh? smirked Percy. Except forest animals, James chuckled. Gordon backed into his berth and sat quietly, pretending not to hear the others joking. Henry even made up a rhyme. Once an engine who pulled the express, let a butterfly cause him unrest. He let out a scream and lost all his steam and spent the day in silly distress. The engines roared with laughter, making Gordon feel even sillier. 
Never mind, Gordon, said Edward. Butterflies can look peculiarly up close. But this didn't make Gordon feel much better. Eventually, the teasing died down and Gordon was the only one awake. After some thought, he glanced at a sleepy Henry. Um, Henry? Henry yawned and opened his eyes. Yes, Gordon, he said. What is it? I'm, I'm sorry I teased you, said Gordon. It appears that even someone as big and proud as me can still be frightened. Henry quietly chuckled. And I'm sorry for scaring you, Henry yawned again. Good night, Gordon. Don't let the butterflies bite, said Henry. Gordon smiled to himself before realizing what he had said. What? Henry! But Henry had already fallen back asleep. After some thought, he glanced over at a sleepy Henry. Golly! Henry wanted to die.